Hey, welcome back folks. Another day on Sling Mountain. Scrambling part two. If you watched yesterday's video and got anywhere near the end, massive thumbs up from me. Well done. It was too long. I learned my lesson there. Uh, a half hour video is too, is too much to listen to me waffling on. So I've set myself some new targets. Today's supposed to be five minute Friday. This is not going to be five minutes, this one, but it will be shorter than yesterday's. I uh, can guarantee that, crikey. That has edited down as well, honestly. I have no idea how I managed to talk for so long. I don't even view myself as a chatty person. Some people would call me quiet, but when the camera's out, it seems that I just get verbal diarrhea, like now. Scrambling part two, okay, is going to be about the sort of techie side of stuff, right? So taking chest coils, how we might belay. I'm not going to cover building belays. You need to know how to do that. You know, I'm not going to cover how to place gear. I can't really on Sling Mountain, but you need to know how to do that. I'm not going to cover sort of you know how to abseil. They're all skills you need as a mountaineer and as a scrambler. But you know I've got other videos on these different parts, so they're, they're building blocks. It's interesting, really. Scrambling courses. Uh, you know I run a lot of them. And if I do a two day scrambling course, you know, which is towards rope scrambling, advanced scrambling is what we might call it. Actually, what I do on day one is we go climbing. All right, we go somewhere like Trevan Bach and we do some lower grade rock climbing because you need to have those skills. You need to be able to place solid gear. You need to know about equalizing bits of gear. So although like scrambling and mountaineering is like a step on and up from walking, it's almost like a step down and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, I mean in, in terms of, um, I don't know what I mean from it really, just in the scale of extreme, you know, walking, rock climbing, scrambling and mountaineering is somewhere in there isn't it, uh, and it can take you to some really gnarly places, but in terms of the terrain, it's not as extreme as the rock climbing stuff, okay, but the skill set, crikey, it's massive, you need to know all the climbing kind of stuff really, and have loads of experience in that to make these really good decisions and judgments because there's so many variables with scrambling, okay? So I don't normally say this on my videos because I kind of think it goes without saying, but maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But I don't like to do the hard sell. But if you're into this kind of advanced scrambling kind of thing, rope scrambling and mountaineering, you want to learn how to do it, a course is absolutely invaluable for it because you actually you just you can't replicate the stuff here or here on Sling Mountain or in any video to be honest that you can actually in person out on the you know on the mountain itself so do consider it hopefully this will be a good little taster and give you a few things to practice in that but it, it just it can't be a replacement for a, you know a mountaineering a scrambling course kind of thing so look us up on JV Mountain Skills, but equally as loads of other really good providers as well for this kind of thing. Make sure they're appropriately qualified and experienced, etc., etc. One thing I didn't mention yesterday uh, in that kit video that I should have done. I'm sure there's other bits as well, but one bit I didn't mention that um, what was his name? Uh, Johnny Lowett. I hope I'm getting your name right. Sorry if I'm not. Uh, he mentioned taking a uh, some spare cord or rope, we call it tat, and a knife, sorry if you can hear the dog sneezing, uh, so you can put that around a boulder or something to abseil off, again it's not an abseiling video, um, but having some tat to leave in situ uh, might mean you escaping and bailing you know, more easily, so it's, when I'm out mountaineering I do have that in the rucksack, so that was a good spot, thank you for prompting that one. Now. It's going to be a little bit blunt, some of these instructional points. I'm going to try and keep them in little sort of modules, if you like. It just all flows into one. That's the tricky part of scrambling. But chest coils, right? We're going to do that first because that's what mountaineers do. They take chest coils. It looks good in photos. All it is is a way of storing ropes. Nothing more than that, really. But we've got to be able to do it, I reckon. We're going to take that 30 we mentioned yesterday, probably. We're not always going to want 30. Sometimes we might want 10, 15, 20. So where's the rest of the rope go? We can't just kind of have it in a, a tangle and carry it like this, can we? We put it around ourselves. What I do first is I take these slings off. I put them on as a little memory job. And I take them off because I don't want to trap them underneath my coils. I will have my rucksack on because I want my coils over my rucksack, okay? Otherwise the coils get trapped under the rucksack if I need to ditch any. And I'll, any hoods or whatever that I've got, I'll put them up so they're not getting trapped under there as well. 
What I do is I tie in, same as always, you know, I've got a nice figure of eight with a stopper, it looks like a figure of eight, and this is about the same size as the tie-in loop, because I want it neat and tidy. I'm gonna chuck a, a loop a rope over my head, and I'm gonna get this pointing up, right, so it's not like down here or anything like that, I want it up like that. I'm gonna use my spare hand to put out level with the waist belt of my harness. Okay, and that's going to form the guide. So each time I throw a loop over my head, yeah, you can see I'm snugging it up onto that hand. I don't want multi-length loops over my head. One, it looks a mess in photos, and rule number one of climbing mountaineering, look cool. And two, they just get snagged on stuff or they fall off your shoulders if they're really long, if they're too short, they're, they're just awkward. So get them all the same sort of length. And at this point, now I've got enough, I've decided that's how many coils I want to take. Actually, if this has gone loose at all, just sort of spin the whole lot a little bit, okay. Next up, whichever side the knot is going to, I put that arm through, so left in this case for me. Any fine tuning there. Dangling rope to the rest of my pile of rope that's on the floor. I'm gonna take that over everything and then pull it under everything. So you end up with a loop that sort of length. I'll take it to like my leg loop roughly, I'll give you an idea. Next, I'm gonna take this loop and tie it around these two strands here, okay? I'm gonna tie that in an overhand. Okay, so that's now gonna pull through there, isn't it? That's an overhand there. And what that means is I'm now wearing a set of coils around my chest that are locked off. So if I fall off, there you go, better angle in it. None of these loops are tightening around my neck and you know strangling me. That's important. This loop is a nice length, right? What I'm gonna do with that loop, just to kind of be all belt and braces, this is what I do. I clip it into there, okay? I do that carabiner up. Just makes it nice and neat, doesn't it? Look how it's all going nice and straight and there's no dangling or anything like that. I've left that undone on, uh, for a reason. If I'm just walking, like, and this is purely a rope store to get to the next rocky bit of terrain, with that done up, that's what I'll do. If I'm going into climbing mode and I'm pitching stuff, I'm properly on belay in that, I'll actually chuck a quick clovich in there and put that into the same carabiner, do him up this time. And I tighten him up. Again, so it's all nice and neat. It's all getting pulled up the right way we're happy, okay? This means if I fall off, it goes more onto my tie-in loop and therefore on my harness, okay? So there we go, chest coils, done. Now I get my uh, slings, put them back over, so it's all nice and neat, they're, they're now free to get off, aren't they, when I need to? Remember, this is all over my rucksack and that. Looking good, ready to go. Now it's important with these uh, chest coils, you don't want them too long. You know, I put my hand out as a guide, didn't I, roughly at the waist belt height. If you've got them too long, these are just then falling off your shoulder and they're a right pain to pull them on all the time and everything. If they're too short though, they pull you down like this and you end up walking like Gollum for the whole day. Um, you'll see all sorts when you're out and about in the mountains. But get them a length that's comfortable for you. Someone might look at these and go, oh, a bit short, or oh, they're a bit long, whatever. This works for me, I'm happy with it. So practice this, practice it in your living room, in your bedroom if that's your thing, wherever, okay? Um, but get this length dialed, and you can do that at home really easily, okay? When you're coming to take these coils off at some point, right? Get that out of the way, put them safely on the floor, undo your bits and pieces that you've got going on here, get that carabiner squared away, undo your knots, what we don't want to do at this point is just ditch the whole lot on the floor. Oh, so many twists and tangles be going on. So just, honestly, it's worth this extra minute of time just taking them off one by one, all right? Absolutely well worth it. Then you'll have a nicely flaked rope, okay? It's really important when you're scrambling, you're trying to get a bit of a wriggle on, but don't cut corners. You know, when you're leaving that belay, don't leave knots in the sling, put them back on get them squared away. By taking those extra few seconds on, on those bits and pieces, you really will um, just be winning in the long run, all right? So, we've stored our rope, we're good to go. Now, if I'm in walking mode, right, I've done this on a nice flat area where there's no chance of rock fall, there's no chance of slipping over and something bad happened, I'm now gonna 
walk or whatever, just let's say 100 meters, uh, random number there, to get to my uh, bit of rocky terrain that we're, we're good to go on. There's no consequence of a slip here. If I slip, I just look a bit silly on the floor. That's all right. There's a bit to, there's a bit of rope between us though, because we've we've got the right length ready for our sort of you know rocky action. We just need to store it quickly in a way that we're not going to trip over, okay, and not going to drag it through all the mud and everything. So I'm just taking hand coils like this. Again, it's purely storage, right? At this point, you might see people locking them off with little twists of rope and stuff. Great, that's a possibility. For me, at this moment, I'm talking about walking to the rocky stuff. It's purely a way of not getting the rope twisted and tangled, okay? Right, we've got to our rocky bit of terrain. We're gonna start like climbing now. Let's say we've got to the bottom of Canadian Arete. Actually, that first pitch of that is about a diff, right? So it is proper climbing, right? So my mate puts me on belay, I climb one up, I place a couple of bits of gear on the way. It's likely to be big nuts or a hex or a sling over a spike, that kind of thing. If I fall off, my mate's got me. Um, and I'm all good, okay? I don't want to fall off scrambling. There's lots of ledges and stuff to hit, and we don't place that much gear, but you can place as much as you like. If in doubt, flip it out, place some gear, get something in. You know, you don't have to be bold just for the sake of it. Do whatever keeps you happy. I've scrambled it up. I've got to the top of that first pitch of Canadian Arret, and there's this like um, big sort of spikes of rock there. It's actually pretty precarious. You know, quite a big drop there, like 20 meters or something enough to hurt yourself on. So what do I do here? Well, I'm going to build a belay to get myself safe, okay, first and foremost, and then I can belay my mate up as well. I found a big block, and the big, you know, stuff you put in uh, over on a Canadian Arete, it's literally, I think it's a 240 sling you need, is it? 240, 120? No, I think it's a 120. You put it around, you just literally, you loop it over in this case, right, so it's a spike of rock. I can't loop it over my banister, so I'm gonna thread it through. That's another option, isn't it, threads. Imagine it's on that spike of rock, though. What I do, to get that joint out of the way, is I do a thing called the saw test. I pull it the direction it would be loaded in a minute, and just do that, saw it back and forward. And I'm checking that it's not lifting up and over. You know, sometimes if the spike's a shallow angle, we want something that's nice and you know vertical, really, if not slightly overhanging, that would be ace. And I do that, and the the sling just sits where I want it to sit, ace. If it's riding off over the top, can't use it really. I also don't want any sharp edges or anything, do I? Because, you know, slings on sharp edges, not so keen on them. Right, so I've chucked my sling over the spike at the top of the first pitch of Flaming Arrow. And, all right, great, I've got something to clip into now. So I'll get my rope and I'll just do myself a clovitch. I've been watching those one-handed clovitch videos on YouTube. I'm good to go. Tighten them up, that's all we like clovitches. They're really adjustable, aren't they? Great. Safe, shout down to me, mate, all right. Next up, it's actually on Canadian Arete, I think, on this way around. So let's do it, I'm, I'm on top of Canadian Arete now, looking down, uh, it's a bit more of a platform on this side, which is why I come over here. And then I get my uh, big boa, all right, clip that into the same thing, take in all the rope to my mate, put it on the ledge, take a bit more in there just for the effect. Italian hitch fun times. I love an Italian hitch for uh, scrambling. Could you use guide mode? Yeah, of course you could, right? Any belay method works, but do, why do I like an Italian hitch then? It's quick, simple, done, isn't it? He's come up a bit high and he needs to step down a bit. Okay, well, just go straight into that. Can't do that quite so easily with guide mode plate. Obviously, we've done another video on that, so have a look at it. Italian hitches are brilliant. They come up, clip themselves into the same sling. Happy days, right? With some judgment, you can turn that into a clovitch. I'll let you work that out yourself though, but it does involve the gate opening, so it's not always ideal. You could tie off the Italian, but actually it's just easier, I reckon, to get them into their own clovitch. Done, that's simple, isn't it? Okay. Well, that's nice and easy. That's why we like scrambling, because actually a lot of the time, you are going to these nice, obvious boulders and spikes and threads and stuff to build a belay. One of my sort of mantras in scrambling is never pass a belay, right? Obviously, if it's a metre from the last one, you're going to crack on, aren't you? But the difference between scrambling and rock climbing in one sense is that actually when you read the guidebook for a rock climb, even a long rock climb like, I don't know, Groove de Rette on the East Face of Trillam, which is loads of pitches, tells you how long each pitch is and where to go and where to belay. Scrambling is more up to you. That's the adventurous ace, isn't it? It'll often say, follow the ridge. 
that's it, <laughs> yeah, 200 metre ridge or something. I'm exaggerating, but there's not a lot of info. It certainly doesn't usually tell you where to be there unless there's a specific reason. So you've got to be, you know, keeping your wits about you. And if you see a big boulder that works for a quick belay like this, have it, okay? What you might need to do sometimes is go full on rock climbing mode. Ah, there isn't a nice spike to chuck that sling over. Okay, well, in which case we've got some nuts on us, haven't we? Some cams on us or some hexes, whatever uh, you've decided to take. So I'm not going to teach you the whole belay building thing here, but it's pretty simple, isn't it? We clip that in, we get the join out of the way. Doesn't need to be anything more exciting than that. Clip that into there. Oh, he's done himself up a little bit. Time myself my overhand. Oh, great, there we go. What am I going to do? Get myself safe, that's important, isn't it? Great. Da -da 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 -da. Boom, done. What am I going to do? I reckon Italian itch is a little bit quicker than uh, a guide play, isn't it? Take in, take in, take in. Get him in. Could I clip this anywhere else? Yeah, absolutely, I could. I could clip the boa into the shelf up there. I could clip myself in the shelf. There's some variety there. I could clip that to that. There's all sorts of options. Uh, and away we go. Belay, diddly diddly do. Great, mate comes up. Get himself clovitched in. Bosh, off we go on the next bit. A lot of the time, right, on scrambling, it's rocky stuff to a nice massive ledge that you couldn't possibly fall off and the consequences are, are minimal and you've made some good decisions. So sometimes I'll get up and I might not clip myself in because it's like I'm on top of a plateau. Maybe at this point I got to the top of Canadian Arete and I still want my mate on belay. There's no chance I can come off. You know, I might just, just belay them straight off that. You know, if that, yeah, we wouldn't set up at the top of Canadian, but if, you know, that example, great, away you go. We've done pitch one, it's really good fun Canadian, right? it's probably one of my favourite little scrambles, it's not, you know, if it was twice, three times the length, it'd be even better, uh, but it is like, it feels like properly mini alpine kind of thing, I really like it. After the first pitch, uh, you nip round the corner, up this little awkward chimney, which is really good, get to the top of that and then belay there, and then you're on to more stuff where it's like this cool knife edge uh, ridge going up, uh, you know, Rett, hence the name. Um, and a lot of the time up there, we don't even need slings, get rid of that. You'll, you'll come up to that spike of rock where you could put a sling over it and do an Italian hitch off it. That's definitely a, a one option. The other option with that spike is to just use it direct without a sling. So I haven't got spikes on Sling Mountain, like I said, so I can't just throw it over, so I'm just going to thread it to simulate that. I do my saw test, so my rope doesn't uh, ride up and over, it doesn't, good. There's no sharp edges, so I'm okay with that. And I can just belay straight off that. That'd be good, wouldn't it? The same as uh, any belay. It's got to be unquestionably good, hasn't it? I've looked at a single point anchor by putting a sling through, and I'm, I'm on a single point anchor again. So there's no redundancy, all right? It's got to be just flipping massively good, no questions asked, okay? So I could belay straight off that. I have my mates down there. To belay them up, normally just pull through like that, might shuffle, okay? They fall off, hold tight. You get so much friction off rock. If you want a bit more, you can wrap it around a bit more like that. That's quick, isn't it? Great, I mean, how long does it take you to put a rope over a spike? Well, about that long, that was quick. It takes you longer to find the thing and check it than it does to actually use it. Disadvantage though, what was I clipped to? Nothing, so if I'd have wanted to use that, Probably there's options of all these things, of course, but I'd have probably just put a sling over or around it, whatever, clipped into that, and then I'd have probably gone for an Italian itch because I had the sling there already. Choices, 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 eh? Can't go into all the details uh, of each and every variable um, belay that you'll ever find scrambling, okay? But when it comes to, uh, you know, those first couple of pictures of Canadian Arrow, you're basically climbing, right? It just happens that you're wearing boots or trainers rather than rock shoes, right? But the principles are the same, and you've got these coils on, make you look cool, yeah? You might not put many coils on for the first pitch of Canadian Arrow, it depends how long your rope is. Um, but it's, it's fairly long, and then you're into the more traditional scrambling stuff, right? So you could just pitch the whole way up it, right? And this is where scrambling gets tricky. What have we mentioned so far? We've mentioned the climbing side of things. I'm on belay, I'm placing gear, I'm building full-on belays. The first thing we mentioned was, I'm just walking from A to B to get to the rocky stuff, just walking like this. Da -da 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 -da. 
no consequence. Now, this is where the middle ground, well, it's a massive subject, right? What you'll see is people walking along like this, they're getting onto technical terrain now, so they're using their hands and stuff, but they're not pitching, they have no belays or anything. And what they're doing is they're just holding this to their mate. So if the mate falls off, the idea being that they can brace themselves and they're going to hold their mate. You ever tried that? It's hard. You've got your friend who's 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever stone on the end, holding them on a rope, no runners in between you, no belays. Ooh, yeah, try it. It's hard. Try it in your garden. Try it somewhere there is zero consequence. Just get, you know, literally tie your wife, girlfriend, husband, whoever, into the end of this rope. And just get them to lean back in your garden and feel how much you have to try. Imagine trying that in your garden again and you're like blindfolded with your eyes closed and they're just gonna not even give a three, two, one. They're just gonna go poof and jump you know, in the garden so if something bad happens, they're on the grass. Try it, it's worked really hard. Now we call that moving together and I cringe a bit when I see some people doing it because sometimes you just look at people and go one off, all off. I'm not so excited about that. There's some massive judgments to be made with this thing and there is a shed load of practice needed to do it. So when you, when you see a, you know, uh, an instructor type person or a guide type person doing it, they're going to be working really hard, right? On your sort of mountain day on your MCI assessment, Mountaineering Climbing Instructor Assessment, oh, it's I'd say it's well, probably is stressful, it's an assessment, but you're just working flipping hard, you're so on it that day, making all these choices of methods, and even when you're walking, you know, you're ready for your assessor to literally try and jump off or something, and you're all bracing, you're walking along ready the whole time. The middle ground makes up such a big part of scrambling and mountaineering, which is why I keep banging on about these judgments and going on a course, because it's so much easier to do this for real on the mountain. Okay. Advanced scrambling, rope scrambling, mountaineering, call it what you will. I think realistically I've covered what I want to cover in this video. There'll be things I haven't covered, 110% there will be, right? If you've got specific questions, please fire away. I'm happy to do another video if I think it can work, if you've got specific things that you'd like to like to see and you think it would work for a video. So, you know, do, do ask those. I, I'm definitely open to uh, suggestions and that. Do fire away those questions though. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you feel it's been worthwhile. Like I say, it's one that I've put off for a bit because I've struggled to make this work in here. But like I say, I hope it was of use. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it was shorter than yesterday's. More videos coming up very soon.